All murders are monstrous. Yet it is especially disturbing when the lives of children are taken. The reason, if there possibly can be one, for killing them is left unanswered. Cold cases remain open in police files. But solving them often proves to be far more difficult than many of today's television shows and movies would have us believe. Forensic technology has made tremendous advancements over the years. But the detectives who relentlessly pursued the original investigations retire, leads evaporate, and police are faced with the urgency of solving recent homicides. Older cases may not be entirely forgotten. But unless there are some new developments murders that took place decades ago continue to languish in cardboard boxes and police storage units, silently waiting for new information to come along. Back in 1971 two teenagers. Catherine Edith Potter and Lee Rita Kirk. We will call them Catherine and Lee. Were found murdered in a gravel pit in Pickering, Ontario, the motives for their deaths unknown. The girls were young. Whereas, Potter was just 13, while Kirk was 15. The media has a habit of playing up where a victim was found. And soon Potter and Kirk became known not by their names. But where their battered bodies were discovered. The mystery of the gravel pit murders was born. As with any investigation, police needed to retrace the steps that could possibly lead these two youngsters to where their remains were dumped. Which is a shallow, wheat-filled pit about three miles north of the Highway 401 Liverpool Road Cloverleaf. Detectives quickly learned both Catherine and Lee were wards of the Children's Aid Society, and had been living in a group home on Rochelle Crescent in Toronto. The couple supervising the girls, Mr. and Mrs. Robert McMaster, said they were good kids who caused no problems while in the home, where they lived along with four other youngsters. Both girls were in school. Catherine in grade 8 at Woodbine Junior High School, and Lee in grade 9 at George's Vanier Secondary School. Both were described as carefree, and got along well with others in class. Just 15 at the time of her murder, Lee was found next to her friend Catherine in a Pickering, Ontario, gravel pit on October 3, 1971. She had been beaten and strangled. The evening of Friday, October 1, 1971, the pair ate a spaghetti dinner at the home of their foster family. Leaving the house around 6.30, the girls got a ride with their foster father and were dropped off at the corner of Young Street and Finch Avenue in the north end of Toronto. All the residents in the group home were free to come and go. But they were expected to say where they were heading and what time they'd be back. The girls had made plans to visit Kirk's biological father in Richmond Hill that evening and said they would return home no later than 11 p.m. It was an exceptionally warm night for October, 76 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pair were going to take a bus the rest of the distance. When McMaster said goodbye to the two, there was no way he could imagine it was the last time he would see them alive. Before going on, if you like these stories, do hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell, so you will not miss new stories like this. When the girls hadn't come back to the group home by 1 a.m., McMaster contacted a social worker. When there was still no sign of them an hour later the police were notified. It wasn't like Catherine and Lee to not be home on time, or call. Police were concerned about the missing girls as for the past few years. A growing number of young women had been hitchhiking around the Toronto area, and several of them had been robbed, beaten, or sexually assaulted. It was estimated in 1971 alone the number of Toronto area rapes had increased by 10% from the previous year. Shortly before midnight on Sunday October 3, friends Albert and Vincent were walking in the area of Pickering Township's Valley Farm Road, between the third and fourth concessions. It was a popular spot for teenagers to hang out and drink, fool around, or ride their motorcycles and dune buggies. The two were on their way to watch some motorcyclists race on the trails when they cut through the gravel pit and found the missing girls. Their bodies laying side by side behind some sumac bushes. Moving closer, they saw blood on the grass and a nearby concrete block. Catherine and Lee were dead. 
As soon as police were contacted the area was cordoned off. The apparent positioning of the bodies troubled police. Because it looked as though the girls were killed somewhere else and dumped in the gravel pit next to one another. After the bodies were taken to Oshawa General Hospital, they were sent to the Center for Forensic Sciences in Toronto. When they were found, both girls were still dressed in their corduroy slacks and squall jackets, and there were no signs they had been sexually assaulted. Autopsies revealed one of the girls had been badly beaten. The official cause of death for both was asphyxia by means of ligature strangulation. Meaning they had been strangled to death with something other than bare hands, possibly a rope, wire, or cord. There were no signs of drugs in their systems and tests of their stomach contents revealed the two had been killed approximately three hours after eating. Placing the time of their deaths at around 9.30 p.m. Further forensic examinations performed on the girls revealed some strange findings. The clothes of both Catherine and Lee had flecks of paint on them, in not just one or two hues but many different colors. Paint found on Catherine's clothing was mainly the metallic kind popular on customized cars and motorcycles. Including yellow, orange, red, and pale green. The same colors were discovered on Lee's garments along with dark green and dark blue metallic paint. Under a microscope, investigators took samples from the sole of Catherine's shoes, and found traces of silicon, aluminum, iron, and titanium. There were small silvery globs, the kind that dropped to the floor when using a welding machine, still clinging to the remains. Smudges of motor grease and light engine oil were found on the clothes and hands of both girls, along with a few gray wavy hairs. Bloodstains on the girls flowed from head to foot, indicating they were standing when beaten. To police, the evidence pointed to Catherine and Lee being murdered somewhere other than the Pickering gravel pit, probably an auto body shop or a garage. Considering the grease, oil, and paint particles, their bodies could have also been moved from the scene of their murder in a van or the trunk of a car. Soil stains on their clothes indicated the girls may have been dragged before being dumped into the gravel pit. Chemical analysts attempted to link the samples from the clothing to dozens of local garages and motorcycle repair shops. But were unable to find a match. The question now remain. How did the girls get from the north end of Toronto to a gravel pit in Pickering? Police believed that the two spent their bus fare on cigarettes. As a new package of export as was found in Lee's pocket, with four cigarettes missing. They then hitchhiked and were picked up by the person or persons who killed them. Within weeks, a $5,000 reward was posted by the Attorney General's Department for information leading to whoever killed Catherine and Lee. Police investigated 100 tips from people who swore they remembered seeing the girls getting into cars not just in Toronto, but places like Port Perry and Whitby. Neighbors in the area of the gravel pit remembered seeing a later model car parked with its lights on. At about a half mile from where the bodies were found. For some reason, their dog seemed upset at that time. But since it was dark the residents weren't able to gather any more information about the car. At the time of their murders, police had difficulty locating the next of kin for both girls. The policy of the Metro Children's Aid Society was to advise police when of such incident. And not the biological mother and father. When wards of the society were missing from foster homes. As a result, the biological parents of both girls were not told their daughters failed to return to the group home. Catherine's mother discovered her daughter was dead when she heard about the murders on the radio. There was no money to pay for her young daughter's funeral. She applied for and subsequently received $902 under the Compensation for Victims of Crime Act. The money was just more than enough to pay the funeral home. With $804 towards arrangements paid by the girl's grandfather and $98 for other expenses, in 1976, five years after the murders, police were still no closer to finding their killers. Despite taking 2,000 statements and interviewing 225 Toronto area, known sexual offenders. After almost four decades, 
The murders of Catherine Edith Potter and Lee Rita Kirk remain unsolved. A number of theories AS rise from the public. Ranging from the girls being killed as part of a motorcycle gang initiation to them dying at the hands of sexual perverts. However, it don't hold up. There were no signs of sexual assault on either girl, and motorcycle gangs are extremely unlikely to target two young girls for no reason whatsoever. Today, there is a $50,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person, or persons responsible for the deaths of these two young girls. Even after all these years, police believe there is still some hope of solving the gravel pit murders. A crucial evident last till date is the gray hair that was left behind. Some also said it could be assault from sex predator, but there were two of them and he accidentally killed them before he could prey on them. It is 40 years now, chances are if the killer has gray hair on 1971, most probably he will be gone by now. Hope this video gives you some insights on this case. And if you like my video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and comment down below. I will be making more videos like this. Thank you.